for the first time ever, I've stepped into the Ruahine Ranges in search of that elusive trophy public land red stag. So come along and enjoy this hunt. G'day guys, welcome back. And today the plan uh, is to hunt the Ruahine Ranges for the Raw, Raw 24. So uh, pretty pumped to be here. Come a long way already. Sitting up right now at about a uh, thousand meters above sea level. So today I'm hoping to be able to push right to the tops. And I've gone into an area where I bumped into six groups of hunters coming in here, which is I've never had that before. So um, some of them helicoptered into the tops and uh, experienced some pretty bad weather. So hopefully we can make something of it. And let's go. Come on. Basically this trip's going to be 10 points and over only. I say that, but <laughs> unless I see like a really mature like 8 or 9 or something that's really mature that's super old then I'll take them out but nothing young, nothing young is going to be shot on this trip so but basically I've got 4 days in this absolutely stunning place that's just amazing never stepped a foot into the Ruhingis so um, yeah it seems pretty pretty cool uh, Cyclone Gabriel has done a massive amount of damage and it makes it very hard to get around but there's no footprints in the river that I'm going up uh, so I think I'll have the place to myself but right still got a 500 meter vertical altitude climb so oh, I'm not looking forward to it so I'm going to get going Okay, climbed up off the valley floor down below me. First wee little climb. <clears throat> it's hot man. And end up I'm gonna go way the heck up there. Yeah. So I just set up tent. I looked up the hill. I've been setting up my tent on the side of the cliff for ages and I look up the hill and there's a deer about 40 yards, 50 yards away that's fed out. <laughs> it's like what? I'll show you. Well, good morning, guys. It's the morning of day two, so it's pretty cool last night. It's there's three deer up there, they're just they're probably 60 yards away and just didn't move all night. So it's a little bit of roaring below me, but, but yeah, pretty average, pretty average sleep to be honest. My camp set up is just a, I just kicked it out of the side of the hill in the river. So <laughs> it's pretty bony and I figured out that my Air mattress has a air leak, so I think I blew my mattress up about six or seven times last night. But hey, if you want to be able to get to the tops, you got to sacrifice a fair bit of comfort, to be honest. 
So my pack weight for this trip is 20.3 kilos, including rifle. Um, so you definitely got to choose to leave a bit of gear at home and go a little bit uncomfy if you want to make it up there. Because saving out to 25 kilos, you're just not going to get up there. It's just too much. So. But anyway, the plan today is... I still want to push, I'm not quite on the tops, I'm probably 200, I think I'm 280 metres down. Um, so I'm actually going to push into the beach, right up in behind me here, push up into the beach and uh, get right up to the tops. Today's meant to be really, really stunning and I can, I can see that. And then tomorrow the wind starts picking up so I have to camp in a get a weather report on the uh, on the inreach and then camp in a pretty selected campsite tonight even here it got quite windy last night so which I was a bit worried about my tent but it stayed well that's really gutting got all the way up here I'm at 1500 meters and check thought I'll check the weather it's meant to be cloudy up here, above a thousand meters for two days now. It's so gutting. This is exactly what I was hoping wouldn't happen. So yeah, just busted my butt for three hours to get up here and thought, oh, surely it'll lift, but no. Morning and evening cloud both days, which translates to cloud all day. At 950 meters and above, so. So I'm going to, I can't believe it, uh, I can hear stags going down around me, which I was going to hunt for the next, for the last few days I was up here, but I don't think there's any point being up here, so I'm going to hoof drop right back down another 600 metres in elevation again, and hunt those noisy guys, so there's sign all through here, there's heat. But there's nothing roaring up here, so yeah, bummer, man. So I'm really bummed out. It's really open to camp right up high and glass away, but it's not going to happen. So back down through the leatherwood. All right, I just dropped off the tops and I tipped into another basin because there were two stags roaring in here. And boy, oh boy, it was hard work. It was not pretty, man. Just saw that uh, monkey scrub and that low beach and just, uh, just, it was hard work. Ooh, makes me tired thinking about it again. But I'm in a really, really nice area now, sort of quite close down to where I, where I mentioned those flatos, sort of about 150 meters above them. So, um, there's actually quite a bit of stag sign in here, so there, there must be a lot of deer in here, guys. I mean, there's just, I think there's satellite, young satellite stags just going around everywhere, because I'm coming across deer prints everywhere. It doesn't matter where you go, there's deer prints in here. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to find myself the nicest campsite. Because <laughs> last night was pretty dismal, there's a lot of condensation as well, so... Alright, so I've come down and I've made a bit of a base camp for the next few days because the weather's not as good as they thought it would be so not not even close <laughs> so she's pretty clouded and it came clear for about half an hour and then gone so I'm kind of glad I got off the top so what I'm going to do though I'll show you my base camp I've done a pretty pretty good pitch actually with the tent I've just got all my my down gear, which was super condensated and wet. So quilt, pants, my puffer jacket, all just hanging out there, drying off, which is cool. See, so yeah, it's all tucked in nicely away from the wind, and pretty happy with the pitch. Pretty good. I just kick a nice flat area and all the softy silty stuff, and got the river. You know, right behind me, obviously. So it's good. Happy camping. Happy campers. I really miss my hammock. 
uh, I had this thought that I was going to be on the tops <laughs> for like two or three days. So yeah, I wish I had my hammock because it's way better. Like getting in and out of a tent and the condensation, tents are useless. Anyway, before we go out on a basically going to, I'm in quite an area where it's fairly, the gradient's fairly nice and there seems to be a few roaring stags in so they've stopped for the day but they're going to start up in probably about an hour I'd say. So before we go and do that, I'm going to go and do some bush tiptoeing basically. I'm going to go over my got a few new bits and pieces of equipment that I want to go over um, and yeah let's have a look at those. Alright so in front of me here I've got a few new bits, bits and pieces, toys and things like that. So this is my original Savage 284 Winchester um, but it has now been dropped in a pretty cool product to be honest. Not a cheap product but um, it's very very neat the way everything works with it so basically with that there the buttstock uh, folds up on itself so it makes this rifle is two millimeters over the legal length the legal short limit in New Zealand uh, two millimeters with the suppressor on. so it's 762 mils and that's um, Basically the reason why I wanted to go for that was pretty much just clambering through the bush like what I did today and yesterday. Uh, um, it really did make it a lot easier that the bottom of the rifle was in the, uh, the scabbard, rifle scabbard and then the top of the rifle was not sticking above the pack so got a bit of a hard time but um, in the bush but it's what it's made for right so so yeah, this one is this one means that I've really committed to a savage um, long action, and that's okay because eventually I want to drop a magnum in here and then maybe turn the 284 into a bush rifle. But when the funds free up, I'll do that. Um, there's two new items that I've got, and I'm mean, very very impressed with them. Uh, the first one here is the Maven. RS 1.2 scope um, and this is a 2.5 to 15 by 50 with an illumination which is my favourite power range for hunting um, and to be honest took this to the range and this thing is it's unbelievably clear like the glass quality on this Maven scope is it is through the roof for what it's worth you can kiss your VX5 and your VX6 away with the quality of this scope. Um, and then also, this is also from the same company. Uh, this is a Tricer BC bipod, uh, tripod, sorry. It's a carbon fiber tripod with a ball head that is load rated to 30 kilos. So you can see I've got my rifle on there and it's fantastic. There's no play in it, there's no slot. Um, love it. So basically the Tricer BC tripod um, shaved 400 grams off my tripod but I think I got a tripod that was about 10 times better. Uh, so this is a, again it's a buy once, cry once product but a fantastic product and so stable with the bigger legs at the bottom. Really really impressed with it. So Maven Optics and the Tricer BC are sold by the Modern Hunter in Australia. Um, kind of teamed up with them and they got some fantastic products and they actually ran out of stock on the scopes and he said I'm gonna have to back order it for you Josh so I said that's cool. He said can you give me a date? He said you'll have it by then. Uh, he was a week early, so I was really, really happy that I could get this to the range and get it dialed in. Um, but yeah, again, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff, guys. So I'm pretty stoked to be to be using some of this gear. That just means that it's you know the gun was a little bit lighter with the Hunt 26 stock. I believe it weighed in at 806 grams with the 300 Wisdom magazine in there as well. So pretty impressive stuff pretty impressive. Go check out the Modern Hunter, um, the guys that run it are the top blokes in Australia, 
they just they're hunters themselves and they know what to look for um, but yeah if you buy a maven scope i don't think you'll regret it it's a pretty cool piece of kit Just coming from camp. It's about 150 meters up there. You can see the uh, it's where I was this morning on the tops. It's actually lifted. The clouds are all lifted, like just like right on that 1500 meter point. There's still cloud there. So, but yeah, I've got a stack roaring back, long way back from me. But what I'm going to do is sit here, sit right in here and just quietly listen for a bit. See if I can pick up a roar and quite close to me. Stupid, there's a better one, a better sounding one back there. But yeah, it'd be interesting because I haven't walked through there. So it'd be interesting to see if I could perch up somewhere and see if I could bring him in. So I'm probably within 500 yards of him, so. But everywhere you go, there's just the trees have been thrashed, or there, there must be so many young satellite stags that I'm not making noise in here. So he may just come in. Right, let's make a plan. Let's make a plan, man. So last night I camped way up there and then took the ridge to the left, right to the top this morning. Chasing stags through the bush. Coming off the tops was a good move. I'm still camped up at a thousand meters, but it's so much warmer. For all of you Ruahini hunters out there, it's uh, a lot tougher than where I usually hunt. So um, I know you can get full drive access to some of the huts and things like that, but she's pretty nasty gnarly country so uh, hats off to you guys who hunt the Ruahinis often she's a big place man she's a big place good morning guys it's the morning of day three so just just about to head off for a bit of um, bit of bush talking so see if we can make it happen today but can't hear anything roaring close to me so I'm gonna peel out way along the and go way along the uh, the flat areas and hopefully we're on the right side of the stags today <laughs> let's go
How cool is that? Came to within about 15 meters. He was just a scrubby little four pointer though. So obviously I'm going to leave him, but pretty neat. Worked out really well. I sort of got on this little rise that I'm sitting on. There's a bit of a gully, a little gut with a stream running between us. And I could just constantly check in the wind with my lighter. He was above me. And he probably cut the distance by 300 metres ish. Uh, maybe not that much, maybe 200 metres. And he's, he's winded me now because the thermals have finally changed. And now my sense actually going down the valley. So before that, Northerly was pushing everything up. So he's finally winded me. But it took him quite a while, but I was sort of trying to sneak in to get some real nice photos of him. But yeah, still, he's, he's young and stupid, but still not totally stupid, you know. They are the kings of the bush, man. Really cool. Really cool to see. Cool to roar one right in like that. Let him walk. <laughs> I do have a stag roaring quite a ways down the valley from me. Which I need to go that way anyway to get back to my tent. So um I'll probably probably wait, see if something comes in through here again. And if nothing comes in then it's only like ten o'clock, so I'll end up mooching down the valley. And I want to get south of that other stag, otherwise he'll wind me. So I'll need to go right down and out. He's roaring pretty well though, which usually means he's probably young and stupid. But you just never know until you're in on them. You just don't know. So camp's just over that hill over there. I don't know, that one there. Whew. It's quite a ways back. It's hard country guys. I thought maybe I could just pull axe down this slip. And there's a big waterfall down in there as well, so no, it's gonna be up. Right back up, right back down where I came from. I've kind of learnt my lesson in here. Come where go where you came from. So as you can get bluffed out pretty quickly, but have a look at this. 
This is nothing I've ever seen before. That's two gigantic slips that have come down either side of the valley. They've completely blocked the whole river. The cyclone has just absolutely destroyed this place. It's amazing. I can't believe it. I, f I really feel for the people now, like when you see stuff like that, you're just like, wow, people in the Hawke's Bay and that just must have got absolutely, it must have been pretty devastating. Yeah. Just stopped at my little lookout to the tops, and I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I just spied a stag on the very top, which gives me quite a lot of foam. <laughs> oh, how far away is he? He's a thousand and fifteen yards. It's a hind. Beautiful. I'm pretty sure there was a stag there before. Use this as my rangefinder, and like it is. I just range the top, very top of the tops at 1240 yards, just like that. This was an upgrade from my Leupold rangefinder. Um, I had a Leupold RX 1400, I believe it was, I, with a TBR, and this is exactly the same sort of setup, except this one here is a Maven, a Maven RF 17 to 25. The optical clarity on this, guys, is out the gate for a rangefinder like it's really really decent but the coolest thing is as well it's got a bow mode uh, it's also got a field and a forest mode so basically that little lever there you flick if you're in the forest like here um, and you're bow hunting and you see something and you just want it to actually punch through um, to the last target that you want it to it will do that um, so that's pretty cool but the thing is, is I got it out of the box at home <clears throat> and I ranged a hill that I'd never ever ranged before at 2400 yards so I don't actually I think this goes out to 4,000 four and a half thousand meters or yards on targets so um, pretty powerful little range finder so yeah there you go Maven guys Maven scope Maven range finder you'll find them at the modern hunter in Australia, go and pick one up. Super, super sweet rangefinder. Sweet, it's just gassed up. Some lunch and electrolytes and that. Some co a couple of coffees. I was hanging out for coffee. <laughs> and uh, gonna go and. Ah, the wind's a bit tricky because it keeps going up and down, up and down. So, don't know. So, I'll probably just mooch up the river and there's a stag roaring that one that yesterday afternoon I tried to get onto he's still going as well but I'm pretty sure he's young and dumb pretty sure and I'll hunt him on my way out tomorrow because with that big blockage down there that that hole must be like if you judge by the contour of that big lake thing must be at least 10 meters deep it must be uh it'll be impossible to get around so i'm not going to try and go out the stream tomorrow it'll just be i can see it going all wrong <laughs> this is a cliff either side now i had to walk around it this morning to get back to camp so i'll probably end up having to jump basins with, a, with my pack again and uh pretty much topple onto a uh, different ridge and just try and blast my way back down but for now I like the winds going up the air but then it turns around and comes back down here but for the afternoon I'm just going to go 
pooch up the river and see if we can figure out what the wind's doing. There's no point jumping in the bush if you don't know, if you can't figure out the wind. So, see, and then see if we can get onto that stag this afternoon, this evening. coffee time. I have one more hunt left. So this afternoon's hunt didn't go that well. Don't know why, maybe the wind swirled and gone, I'm not sure. But I didn't see any deer, so yeah. But that's okay, one more hunt, one more hunt. You just don't know what might happen, so uh, don't ever stop hunting till you get to the car. It's my motto. <laughs> but yeah, so that's pretty got some pretty cool footage and seen some pretty cool things, but yeah, all right, coffee time. Good morning guys. Just uh packed up camp and having a bit of breakfast. Last day today. So a big walk out today, so the wind is just ripping down the valley this morning, so the plan of attack is to kind of get up, see if I can hear any stags roaring probably below me, which is a bit unfortunate with the wind. Mind you, it's swirling all around, so now it's coming back up the valley. So I don't know, we'll see how we go, but, but uh, yeah, it'll be the big, big walk out. Back home to my girls. That was my sleeping pad for a few nights. Alright, loaded up, I'm ready to rumble. Just put a few k's under the boots. Let's go hunting. 
So I've climbed up 300 meters from the valley floor and uh, I've got a stair crawling below me. He's a long way away though. He's fired up down there. He's fired up all right, but he's a long way below me. She just bumped a little six pointer in here. He's not quite annoying. It's a satellite, so. But the wind, he was clever enough to get on this side of my wind. Just straight to him. He stood there for that. I just managed to get the binoculars on. See if he was like, okay, but he was just tiny. He was just standing there. Was, and he just winded me. Gone. He just bolted. But beautiful bearing. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's, there he came into me. I think I'll finish it up here, guys. So, I had a, a really, really nice time. I didn't pull the trigger on anything on purpose because, like I said in the beginning of the video, it was going to be 10 points or over. So, but what a Heenies, man. What a, what a place. It's, it's nasty. The tops are nasty, but there is no shortage of deer in here. Man, every little spur you get onto, there's deer sign. Every slip, there's deer sign. There's just deer sign everywhere. Um, and the amount of satellite stag prints that are just honking around the place, they're everywhere. So uh, I would have probably heard, so I got onto three stags, probably heard another seven, something like that. It's just an amazing place. But anyway, so I'm going to mash back down to the car. I'm going to be home by 4 o'clock this afternoon. So, uh... Oh. It's just waterfall after waterfall after waterfall. Oh, i got about 500 metres to go. Uh, woo! Hard work, bro. Gotta go up and down, up and down. <sighs> Fun and games. Oh. Made it back down to the main river. Oh man. I heard another five stags on my way down. Quarter to 12. That's four hours. <clears throat> oh yeah. Four hours, a little bit of hunting. But yeah, I think it's a total of 14 stags heard, guys. I saw three of them. So, Rohini's is crazy. It's got, it's, there's so many deer in here. Look what I just saw jump onto the road. <laughs> Where is he? Come on, bro. Oh man, he's alright, eh? He's a 10. Awesome. <laughs> How cool is that? Driving home, see the best stag I've seen in like a week. Oh dear. He's just mooching through the open fields here. Love it. <laughs>